In preparation for your interview, we'd like to invite you to view this entire quick video that will help prepare you for that meeting. Our purpose is to help you determine if this organization is the right fit for you, and if during the interview a light bulb switches on and you have the revelation that yes, this is where I want to be. Our purpose is to prepare you with enough information that you're offered a follow-up meeting or perhaps even an offer. Now, it is 100% your right to decline moving forward, but we want that decision to rest with you, not with them. First, we'd suggest that you do some research on the specific company and hiring manager. This may seem obvious, but it's important that you formulate some questions that show you did your homework prior to this meeting. Second, create an initial list of questions you would like to ask during your interview. Sit down and put some thought into what information you're looking to get from this meeting. In other words, what questions do you need answered to know if this is the right opportunity for you? What areas do you need clarified to make you feel comfortable that this environment is one in which you can thrive? Ultimately, the purpose of the first interview is to get all initial questions asked, so make sure you put some thought into all aspects of the position and the organization. Third, put thought into what you feel to be the three most important benefits that you bring to a new organization above and beyond that of your colleagues. The essence is this. By the time you're done with the meeting, what three things are the most important that you want this hiring manager to take away from this conversation? What are those benefits or characteristics or abilities that you have that very few others have? What separates you from your peers? Put yourself in the shoes of the interviewer. What would you say would be the most important qualities for the position you're interviewing for? Why would they choose to hire you over someone else? If it's because of your work ethic, articulate some specific examples. If it's your creativity, list some actual projects that are your best work. If it's your technical ability, list out those accomplishments of which you are the most proud. Fourth, be prepared to answer the following common questions. One of the most common interview questions is typically the first question asked. So, tell me about yourself. Hiring managers intentionally open with this question because it allows them to make an immediate assessment as to how you handle yourself in an unstructured situation. It is perfectly acceptable to reframe in order to understand what specifically the interviewer would like you to cover. As an example, your response could be, I'd love to. Is there a specific area you'd like me to start? This is a perfectly acceptable way to respond to this question, but remember that at the end of the day, be prepared to give an introductory summary of your background and experience. The wrong way to respond to this? Sure, what do you wanna know? Make sure your answer directly fits the concerns and objectives of the prospective employer. In other words, you want to be selling what the buyer is buying. Briefly communicate professional accomplishments, not personal ones. The goal when answering this question is to set the tone for the interview. Be prepared and find a way to start standing out from everyone else. Be brief, take a minute or less to answer this question. Just offer up two or three things that are interesting and useful. Next, be prepared to answer the why are you looking question. First, never speak poorly about your current company, team, or boss. Speaking negatively about someone else actually has the opposite intended impact. Second, put the reason for being open to a new opportunity in the best light possible. This question is your chance to sell yourself, not air your dirty laundry. So consider this when thinking about how to sell yourself to this company. Reflect on what this new role requires and think about an answer that contrasts what your previous company doesn't have, but what this current job does. If you're considering a change from say a large company to a small company, you might say you've had a wonderful experience seeing how a large company does business and you're looking to apply that knowledge you've gained in a setting where you'd have greater responsibility and more accountability for your decisions. It's okay to be honest if you aren't actively looking and state that you aren't actively looking, but be prepared to articulate why it is that they took the time to meet with you today and why you're taking their time to interview you. 
you could state something along the lines of, I'm not actively pursuing another opportunity at this time, but I'm open to the possibility of change because of A, B, and C. And it seems from what my recruiter has told me and possibly what I've heard today, that this might match well with what I would look for when considering an advancement opportunity. Never state that the reason you're looking to leave is because you're compensated poorly or unfairly, or you're looking for more money. The assumption will be drawn that you're simply going to the highest bidder, and a hiring manager will be looking for someone who has much more of a vested interest in the long-term vision and operation of the firm, more so than simply a higher paycheck. Another common question to be prepared to answer is, why do you want to work for our company? This is the perfect time for you to show that you have, in fact, taken the time to do your homework. Begin your answer with statements like, based on the research I've done, or from what I saw on your website, or I read several recent news releases from your firm. The bottom line is to make sure you've processed why you're interviewing here instead of anywhere else. What is it about the working environment, the reputation of the firm, the type of work that they're doing, or the support that they have for their team? The last question we'll cover today is the question of what do you want to make or what salary are you worth or what salary are you looking for when making a move? Ultimately, a number you throw out that's too high might rule you from consideration or leave a negative impression with the hiring manager and a number that's too low leaves little room for negotiation. One option you have is to put the responsibility for salary negotiation back on your recruiter's plate and say something along the lines of, I trust that if we're both interested in moving forward, our recruiter will help us make a decision that makes sense for both of us. I'm really here to get a feel for the opportunity in department and to determine if this is the best next step for me. And I'm sure you're doing the same. I'm confident that if you find me the best candidate for this position, you'll extend me your best and most fair offer. And you can then close with the redirected question. Another response could be to answer your current salary component directly, but then leave the negotiation to another time. More than likely, the hiring manager knows what you're currently making, and they may simply be looking to verify this number. Make sure not to stretch or inflate where you are currently. A possible response could be, I'm currently receiving X annual salary and several other compensation components on top of that amount. I'm unable to determine what the offer should be at this stage until I understand more about the position. When it comes to making the offer, I'm sure it will be a fair salary based on your experience and the requirements of the role. Finally, a more direct answer could be, it's a good question and I can certainly understand why you ask. However, I can assure you that I won't be going to an organization simply based on money. I want this to be the right fit from all aspects, and I have no doubt from what I know of your organization that you will offer a competitive package. Last but not least, make sure you close on next steps at the conclusion of the meeting. This doesn't need to be overly aggressive, as in, I like what I've seen, I know I can do this, when do I start? But ultimately, people like people who like them. Closing for next steps is a key way to show interest and leave the interview on a positive note. An example could be, I like what I've heard today and I'm very interested in moving forward. I understand you're looking for someone in this role who has A, B, and C, and as we've discussed, I have specific experience with A, B, and C. Before I leave, are there any more questions about my background or qualifications that I can answer or clarify for you to better assess my fit within your team? A more direct close could be, do you have any concerns or doubts about my ability to excel in this role? Finally, let's run through just a basic checklist of interviewing do's and don'ts. A navy, dark gray, or black suit is appropriate for most positions, but avoid combing or brushing your hair with your jacket on. Avoid colognes or fragrances completely, and make sure makeup, accessories, neckties, and nail polish are all subtle. Arrive no earlier than 15 minutes, but no later than five minutes prior to your interview. Before entering the building, chew mint, gum, or a breath mint. Don't take your cell phone into the interview. Make sure to bring a printed set of directions to the interview, the client's phone number in case you run late, a folio with paper and a pen, and copies of your resume. These are just a few suggestions for a successful first interview, all designed to keep the decision resting with you for next steps.